Excited to chat again. It's been a little while and a lot has happened in both our lives since we last chatted. We were just speaking before we hit record and you're a new dad. I'm a new dad. I think you said for you, it's been seven months. For me, it's been 10. And I'm just curious how parenthood is treating you. Oh man, it's been amazing. You know, we, uh, uh, you know, having a daughter has just been a blast for us. You know, we, uh, it's funny at first, it's all about mom, you know, but I feel like the last couple months, you know, she's been a lot more playful, interactive. So it's been, it's been, a, it's been a blast. And how's the sleep? Is is the sleep been troublesome? Or are you guys working through that now? You know, she's teething now, so I, you know, I haven't slept a whole lot recently, and more because I, uh, you know, Chelsea, my wife, is up uh, quite a bit. So yeah, no, the sleep has definitely been lacking, but um, you know, outside of that, it's uh, it's good. That's what you know, adaptogens and matcha green tea is for, right? So, and my wife does coffee, so she's you know, she's she's doing the coffee every morning. So you're not into coffee at all. You know, I do coffee here and there. I probably do coffee once a week, every Saturday, kind of on the weekends. But more often than that, I do. I'm a big green tea fan. So I do a lot of matcha uh, and I do sometimes mushroom coffee and tea as well. So I tend to do a little bit more mushroom tea and matcha tea than I do coffee. But I do think coffee is you know, great for a lot of people. And for you, again, becoming a new dad, what would you say is the most unexpected part about becoming a dad. I know it's like, for me, it's a lot of new, it's a lot of unexpected, no matter how hard you prepare, there is so much new and and challenges and it's all beautiful, but it's, it's a challenging time. So what would you say is, has been your greatest challenge minus the sleep? Oh, greatest challenge. Um, well, I'll say this. So, you know, I'm, I'm a, I've, I used to run a functional medicine clinic and I've taken care of thousands and thousands of families, given people health advice. But, you know, when you have health things come up yourself, I think, you know, or with your daughter, that's always a challenge. So early on, she had a few digestive issues. And so we just, in Chelsea was eating very clean, but she had to eat even more clean. Like Chelsea really needed to eat. We pretty much had her do vegetables, wild organic meat, and rice. Like that's what she ate. And, and, and then Arwen's gut did fantastic. So we had that for a few weeks. I'll mention this too. She ended up getting a little bit of cradle cap on her head. Um, and so the things that I've told people to do has been sort of interesting. Cause now I'm like, okay, now I'm going to see if they work with my own, you know, six month old daughter. So I made this mixture of Manuka honey, aloe vera gel, uh, and then tea tree oil. And we started rubbing it on her head. It was amazing. I mean, three days later, completely gone. So, I mean, I guess in terms of challenge, it's like trying some of these things, the gut issues, some of the stuff on the head. And um, so that's, yeah, so I, I guess that would be part of it. And then again, I would just say sleep a second time because I've been so used to getting good sleep mo- most of my entire life. And then now to get up several times a night is, um, you know. That's, and, and even, and I, I feel like too, like I've grown, I'll say this too. I feel like I've grown so much from being a father in two ways. One, like I already had a, you know, 9.9 out of 10 respect for my wife. And now it is a absolute 10 out of 10, because just to see the way that Chelsea gets up and takes care of our, our, our daughter has such great patience and just loves her so much. That for me has just been a, you know, just, just a great experience. And I'll say this too. I even feel like it's brought me closer to God and just seeing like knowing God is a perfect father that loves us unconditionally. Like I know how much I love my daughter, Arwen, like I would do anything for her and knowing that God loves me to an even greater degree. And so just realize it just it has brought me closer to God, realizing what a perfect father he is and my relationship and understanding him, him more. So, you know, I think, you know, fatherhood has been good for, for, for so many reasons. What was labor like? I know you guys had a home birth. I saw the picture on your Instagram and with the blow up tub there and Chelsea had our win and you were, you were reaching over and I think it was like a family kind of caressing after the birth, but talk about what that was like. How long did that go on for? Doing it at home now. And then I've gone to plenty of hospitals to give nutritional consults, see family, that sort of thing. So I, I, I have an idea of what a hospital birth is like with family members and going for that. But doing it at home to me is the great, it just it, what a blessing. It just, there was no stress. That's the big thing I'll say about it. We had no stress. We were so relaxed. We trusted our midwife so much. And just being able to go through that experience was just so awesome uh, of doing a home birth. And so we did a pool birth, like a water birth. And I will say this, my wife does not like to, um, 
that doesn't like to uh, inconvenience people. So she started having contractions and my, her mom was in town and her mom and I we were watching the movie. I don't know if you remember the movie Multiplicity. And uh, we were watching this movie and Chelsea about 20 minutes in is like, I got to go just, you know, just breathe a little bit and I'm just going to go to the bedroom. We're like, okay. And then, you know, and so this was probably a little after six. And, uh, and so anyways, I go in to check on her after the movie's over and she's having contractions and I say, okay, okay, Chelsea, so how far apart are they? And she's like, you know, they're, um, they're, 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 she's like, they're really far apart. I'm like, okay. So then I check on her. I'm like, you know, from what I'm hearing, the noise you're making, it seems like they're closer apart than you're saying. So she said, okay, so they're under five minutes. So the midwife said, hey, call about four minutes. Well, that being said, she said, hey, let me keep the timer myself. I'm like, babe, you're getting down to like, you know, through th oh, like upper three minutes. I think we need to call the midwife. She's like, no, do not call the midwife. I don't want her to come out here when it's not ready and everything. I'm like, and she's saying this in between like excruciating pain. I'm like, okay, I don't want to make, I'm like, okay, I, tr you know, I trust you. I trust your body. So she's like, give me the timer. I'm just going to keep it. And I'm going to go sit in the shower, shower while I do this just for com comfort. I'm like, okay. So I go and check. I'm like, I'm keeping my watch now. And I'm like, okay, we're like at two minutes or under two minutes. And I'm like, Chelsea, what time have you been keeping? And she's like, I don't know. It's five minutes. I look at the timer. Like, no, like, what are you talking about? It's like a minute and a half. So we called the midwife. This is like midnight. And um, the midwife gets there and Arwen is born 30 minutes later. And in the meantime, when I call the midwife, she's like, put towels in. You got to fill up that tub. Well, I'm filling up the tub and the handle breaks off our bathtub. So then the water won't go. So then anyways, I had to duct tape the handle so it would actually work and actually put water. So anyways, it was crazy, but um, I got to, you know, I got to catch Arwen and uh, we got to go to our bed afterwards and relax and be in our own home. And um, it was an amazing experience. Home birth was just incredible. Yeah. I have a lot of similarities with our home birth experience as well. And, and I do like to throw out too, that having a home birth, you can have everything planned. You can, you know, do all the research and things sometimes just don't go your way. I mean, there is a luck aspect too to everything going smoothly. And and it did get close for us to having to go to the hospital, but we were lucky enough to be home. And and the baby wasn't born in the tub, but we did have a tub that we did a lot of the contractions in. And it was just such a beautiful experience to to have that that all happen at home. It was. I, I, I say it was beautiful. It was spiritual. It was just a great bonding experience for all of us. And, uh, you know, we'll... Uh you know, be doing it again in the future sometime. So we hope to as well. You mentioned your clinic there. And I want to talk about a story that you you share in your book. And this was a few years after opening your functional medicine clinic. And you talk about just grinding, pushing real hard, you're loving what you're doing. And, and I'm very, you know, I can really relate to that because I love what I do. I love talking to people like this and reading books and preparing for interviews. And it's just a total passion and it can pull you right in. So let's go back to that phase in your life. First, how long ago was that? And talk about putting in those 60 hour weeks and what that did to your, your health and well being. Yeah. So I uh, see, I started my clinic uh, the very beginning, January 2008. So let's say it's been about close to 13, it's been 13 years. So that would have been my first couple of years of practice. So this is 12, 13 years ago. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm working, you know, 60, 60 plus hours a week. I mean, it was probably more. I mean, honestly, I got up, you know, I'd get up at like 5.30 or five and then I would just go all day until I went to bed. So it was a lot of hours. And, and you know, when you're in your late 20s, you feel like, okay, I can, you know, I can do everything. I was doing training for triathlons at the time and I was single. So I just, I had a lot of time to, to do these things. And I ended up all of a sudden getting these digestive issues. Like my stools were loose. I noticed I just started getting some health more, mostly digestive issues. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. And, um, I realized I met a man who really studied Chinese medicine and who uh, mentored me in Chinese and Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine. And he said, Josh, here's the thing. He said, you are uh, essentially you're working too much. He said, you are, you need to have more downtime. 
And he said, also, you've got a lot of frustration because he said, I know you want to help all these people. You want to, you, you're, 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 you have a growth mindset. So you want to grow, you want to grow your business. You want to grow. He said, but you are, uh, you get frustrated that it's not growing fast enough. So he said, the emotion of frustration actually causes toxicity of your liver and gallbladder, which doesn't allow you to digest fats well. And he said, that's the root of your digestive issue is your liver and gallbladder. And I thought, okay. So I changed my diet a little bit too, because I was doing a lot of raw foods. And um, I started reading up on Chinese medicine, learning more about that. And I started eating a lot more cooked vegetables, still a lot of green leafy vegetables, orange vegetables, little organic meat. I cut back on my oil consumption some. I was just doing large amounts of olive oil, just kind of pouring it on everything, doing more of keto. And now, and, and I then started doing more just vegetables, me doing some grains, uh, like sprouted rice and that sort of thing. So change my diet up. And then I said, the big thing I did was I said, okay, when I'm eating dinner at 6 PM or whatever time it is, I am not working for a minute afterwards. So I still woke up early. I still worked almost all day, but I stopped working and I just would read books or novels. I might watch a show, but I just turned it completely off at dinner and after dinner. And boom, all of a sudden my gut completely healed. Digestion was perfect. And I, I just, I noticed a big difference in my health. And so, you know, it's, it's crazy because I, you know, I'm counseling these patients on gut health. And that's really what also led me to uh, big to really focusing on leaky gut syndrome and writing articles, writing books on how to heal leaky gut, because I gave myself leaky gut mostly from working too hard and from experiencing too much frustration and impatience and unhealthy emotions. And that's when I started digging into Chinese medicine and realizing that 50% of our health problems are due to the emotions we experience. The other 50% is diet and, and uh, exercise and, and lack of activity and those things. But 50% of our health is if you worry, it causes dysfunction of your upper GI, which is your stomach and your pancreas. Uh, so, and we've heard that, right? Okay, you worry a lot. Well, what happens? You get an upset stomach. So worry, that emotion actually shuts down your upper digestive system, okay? Fear. We know fear, uh, actually think about it, like a little kid has a, um, a nightmare, they will uh, wet the bed, right? It causes dysfunction of the kidneys. Or if you are in a fight or flight mode, we know your adrenals are pumping out adrenaline, cortisol, stress hormones. So we know that fear, that emotion affects your kidneys, your adrenals, and your reproductive organs. If you have the emotion of frustration, anger, and patience, that causes toxicity and dysfunction of your liver gallbladder. If you have grief or depression, or if you have had something happen to you in the past and you haven't let it go, maybe like unforgiveness, you still have not forgiven somebody, that causes toxicity and dysfunction of your entire, it shuts your immune system down. That's your lungs and colon. That's where your majority of your immune system lives. And then if you have uh, anxiety, um, that really is related to your, your heart and your cardiovascular system and your brain. So your heart, think about what causes high blood pressure, anxiety. Okay. And so anyways, that's, um, I started learning all about these, this really advanced form of nutrition and all of this Asian medicine and ancient forms of medicine. And when I started using this as well with patients and family members and myself, the results were were, were twice as good because I would always see good results with people with giving them dietary advice. But when I started counseling people on how to heal themselves emotionally, it was like those cases that would only get maybe, maybe, you know, that would get 50% better, but they wouldn't uh, heal completely. All of a sudden those cases and those people started completely healing if they were able to address that emotional component of their health. And I don't even know if you asked me that, but somehow I got down that rabbit hole just as, you know, we talked about my own healing, but that was such a big part of, of well, of when I was able to heal myself, that allowed me to better know how to heal patients. So as part of your healing journey, did you have to go deep and look at your emotional well-being and, and, go, you know, back to childhood stuff and dig that up and, and work through it? I did, you know, I, I did. And so I'll give you a couple things here. So um, now I'll say this, uh, you know, my frustration was due to, um, again, me comparing myself to others. Okay. And seeing other people and their growth and their success. And a lot of people that were older than me. So like comparing yourself to somebody that's 
in terms of their success in fitness or business or that's 20 years older, first off, that's definitely not fair, but we're not called to compare ourselves to others. We're just called to be the best we can be. So I think for me, Jesse, that was a big thing is just realizing, you know what? Like I'm, and the other thing is I think culture, culturally our culture tells us your value is based on your fame your wealth and how much you produce and it was partly an identity issue and i started reading my the bible and realizing that my value like my, my significance my self-worth my value is not in how much money i make it's not in how many people i help heal how many lives are transform but my actual value and self-worth is in that i'm a child of god and like so for me knowing that Hey, I'm I'm a child of God, and, um, and and that's not something I have to achieve. It's something I just receive. Just hey, being a son, and so and then and that changes. So going back to this with Arwen, and not to make this spiritual, but I think spirituality is so important to health. Is that like I look at my daughter Arwen, and I don't want to see her overworked, right? Like I would hate to see my daughter, and you know, when she's 20 years from now, when she is overworked, working 80 hours a week. And she's, you know, and she's, and she's just doing that. Like, what do I want to see of Arwen? I want to see her laughing, playing happy. I want to see her using her gifts. So if she's good at playing the saxophone, great. If she's a great soccer player, if she's a great CEO, if she's a great mom, like, I just want to see her operating in her gifting and loving and serving others, being a person of character. So I realized that true success is not how much I, you know, achieve. It's simply using the gifts I've given, loving other people, building deep, intimate relationships. And so I really also had to change what my idea of success was and my identity. So I think all those things, play. and honestly, when I had that shift and it didn't happen overnight, but over the course of a year or two, where I spent more time reading spiritual growth books, um, the Bible, some of these other things, I re and just reflecting on my identity um, in being a child of God, like, I'll just tell you what, like, I just, I felt free. And even today, I'll tell you, like, I just, hey, I work hard and I know that I'm called to serve people, to love people, to teach people how to use food as medicine, to get people the healthiest nutritional supplements in the world, to add value to people. And I do that, but I don't do it 80 hours a week. I do it 40. And then I take care of myself. I have deep intimate relationships with people around me. I take time and read novels, you know? So like, I, I feel like I have a really good life um, balance right now. And I feel like my priorities are correct. And I think for me, at least having a child and a young child at home makes you really evaluate those priorities. And one thing I've noticed with myself is before I would, you know, mindlessly go on my phone and check email or scroll on social media or be pulled back to my laptop because I work from home and I work online and, and start checking emails and stuff like that. But now I'm very cognizant of that ever since my daughter Sorrel was born. And I try not to. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I try not to do those things in front of her. And I find that it's it's helping me reallocate my priorities and my time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. It's good. So, Josh, how long did it take you to heal? You mentioned your digestive issues and and doing all these things to revamp your health and well-being. How long of a process was that before you noticed that your digestion was better and you started feeling better? I would say in three months, I noticed, oh, this is almost all the way better. And I would say in six months, I just didn't even notice. I mean, it was completely better, but everyone is different. I would say I wasn't, I've, I've taken care of severe cases. I would say it was a moderate case of leaky gut syndrome and in and, and liver issues and all those things. You know, so so it took me about six months. For some people, it can take up to two years. I think most cases in two years, you can just see radical changes. I think almost everybody I work with in three months notices a great improvement. So I say anywhere from typically three months to nine months, I see you see most. I, I, I mean, just crazy big improvement. But sometimes, if somebody's had an issue for 20, 30 years, and and they're still, and they're maybe they make a 80% improvement, but they're not a hundred. Sometimes it just take, and it just depends on how all in somebody goes. If somebody, I'll give you an example. If somebody has inflammatory bowel disease and they follow the exact diet I give them where I say, okay, I'm going to have you eat this pumpkin smoothie for breakfast, chicken, vegetable soup for lunch, and a burger with steamed vegetables for dinner. I'm going to have you take uh, astragalus and SBO probiotics and do this bone broth supplement. And they follow that diet perfectly. And if emotionally 
they overcome their unforgiveness and they go through that practice and they're set free in that way. And they start doing like their spiritual growth every day. They will heal inflammatory bowel disease in three months. Boom. I mean, they will be healed very, very quickly. And I see the same thing with a lot of conditions, you know, whether it be everything from uh, chronic pain syndrome to uh, my mom, you know, I mentioned she had tumors and cancer and those, you know, so like almost all of those conditions. But the big thing is like for my mom, when she healed from cancer, she went all in, like, like she did all of these things. And, um, and some people, maybe they make a 50% improvement. They add more vegetables that are steamed and cooked. They take a couple of the supplements and maybe their emotions get 20% better. They're going to see about a 70% improvement, but they're not going to be a hundred percent improved and it will take them longer. So my answer is it's, it's hard to specifically answer that question outside of just, I wanted to give a little bit of that, uh, you know, that, uh, that explanation. You talked about your mom there. We have discussed this previously on the show, but I want to get back into it. And I know your mom with her breast cancer, she was diagnosed initially when you were a kid. Did she go through conventional treatment that time? Yeah. So, you know, Jesse, my family growing up, we lived in the medical model. Anytime we were sick, we got put on a drug or medication. My mom at 40 years old, when she was diagnosed with breast cancer, went through the conventional model. She went and had a mastectomy. She went through rounds and rounds and rounds of chemotherapy. I still remember to this day seeing her hair fall out. I, I remember her looking like she aged 20 years in two weeks and saying to myself, two things. I never want to see anyone have to go through this again. And number two, there has to be a better way. And so when I was about to graduate and open my functional medicine clinic, uh, which I no longer operate, but when I did, I was about to open it. She called me in tears and she said, I've been diagnosed with cancer again. What do I do this time? It's on my lungs. I flew from Florida back to Ohio where I grew up. We sat down, prayed together. We decided to take care of her all naturally. She started juicing vegetables, drinking bone broth, using ancient superfoods like reishi mushroom, um, cordyceps, turmeric. Uh, green tea. We started doing all these things, taking probiotics. So we started doing this and, and we worked on her emotional health because my mom had a lot of fear and worry. And she, she was always fear. Like she, she always wanted people to, um, uh, she wanted to make other people happy. You know, she, it was really tied to her. And, she, and then she was worrying about everything. So we had her actually say affirmations, like my body is healing. She said, I'm 90 years old. I'm bringing my kids to Disney World. So she said her, she spoke out her future, what she wanted to see her ideal future look like. Um, she spoke out Bible verses. She said, my body, my white blood cells are eating up cancer cells and I'm completely cured and healed. So she did this over like on a 10 minute tape. She listened to it every morning when she got up every night before bed. So she did all these things. We went back to the oncologist four months later. They came back after a PET scan and their exact words were, her exact words were, her female oncologist was, this is highly unusual. We don't typically see this, but the tumors have shrunk by more than half. Come back nine months later, nine months later, almost complete remission. And today my mom's in her late 60s. She says she feels better now in her late 60s than she did in her 30s. She water skis, she runs in her 60s. My dad's in his 70s and he's, you know, water skis three days a week in his seventies, lifts weights. And so my parents have great health because they, you know, practice a lot of these, uh, you know, health principles. So you mentioned you were in chiropractic school when you got that phone call that she was diagnosed again with cancer. When you go back home and take care of her, are you the one coming up with this plan? You mentioned all the different things you were doing to help her recover. Was this, was this on you, Josh, or were you working with other people? And you mentioned an oncologist, but was that just to like, check up on her? I'm just curious who came up with the plan. Well, that's who gave her the diagnosis uh, and, and did checkups. There was no, you know, who did checkups. So one, yeah, it sort of was. I mean, I created every last part of the plan. Now I do want to say I absolutely went and sought advice from some of the world's leading experts. I was really blessed at the time to know other people in the integrative medical space. And I went, I have three in particular I'm thinking of, and I went and interviewed them. I asked them exactly what they would do in this situation, what they would do for diet, what they would do for supplements, what they would do for holistic treatments. I spent, and I mean this, thousands of hours reading up on everything from keto diet to Chinese medicine herbs to everything else, essential oils that have anti-cancer properties. So I put together exactly what she should eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, the exact supplement she should take, when she should go on a walk. Like I wrote out everything for her and she was the perfect patient. She followed it to a T. So I did create the entire program, but you know, I definitely was blessed to have people 
that I saw that I was able to get advice from and, um, you know, seek counsel from as I put the, the plan together. I'm so happy to hear it was such a successful outcome, but I can only imagine being her son and, and obviously you're dealing with stress. You're at chiropractic school. I'm a chiropractor too. So I know what that's like. It's intense and just the pressure of, of, you know, not knowing, cause I mean, you can have the best plan, but we're all different and, and there's so many different variables. So you must've really felt that pressure as she's going through her treatment. You, you know what? Uh, and again, I, 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 I always just, uh, I'm always open about who I am. Some people don't, don't like it when somebody brings up spirituality, but I just, I'm going to, for me, I actually did not at that time. I didn't feel a lot of pressure. I felt peace and I just had great faith. Again, we prayed about it. I just had a peace in my heart and felt led to do this with her. And so despite the outcome, number one, you know, I wanted my mom to live more than anything, right? You know, so I did everything I could. At the same time, I, I had faith that God was going to come through and heal her. And, um, and, and she was. And so I think at the same time, I felt just a sense of peace and confidence that thing together and just having faith and, and knowing she was going to be healed. And my mind never went to what if she dies? What's the worst case scenario? Um, I don't feel like that. That never helps the situation. What helps the situation is giving somebody hope and encouragement. Think about this. Your emotional health affects the outcome of you healing. I just mentioned earlier, if you have fear, it completely uh, taxes your adrenals. Your adrenals supply energy to all your organ systems. In Chinese medicine, it's actually called qi, uh, what, what your adrenals produce. So it's essentially your life force, your life energy. That, that, that's, and so think about when people go to traditional doctors today, Jesse, the first thing they do is they, they strike them with fear. If you read the Bible or, it, or a me ancient medical textbook, they will tell you the last thing you should do is have fear. They say have faith and hope. That's ancient medical practitioners. That's the Bible. That's all like that. That's what you're supposed to do to heal. Yet our conventional medical system, the first thing they do is say, here's the worst case possible scenario. It is the complete opposite of what you're supposed to do. So for myself and for my mom, we didn't mention it or reflect on it one single time. The only thing we did is I said, mom, Hey, what does your dream future look like? What do you want to be doing in, you know, 30 years when you're 70? And my mom said, Josh, I want to be running around with the grandkids of you and your sister. And I want to be bringing them to Disney where my mom is a huge Disney fan. <laughs> my mom is probably the biggest Minnie Mouse fan on the planet. And you know what happened actually about five weeks ago? My mom brought my niece and nephew that are three and five years old to Disney World. They were there almost 12 hours. First off, I could never go to Disney World 12 hours. And the fact that I'm like, my, my legs would probably give out, you know, from standing in those long legs. But anyways, my mom did that at 68, you know, um, with, uh, with her grandkids. And so anyways, it's, uh, but that's, that, that, that was our, uh, we, we focused completely on faith and had, had no, you know, not, not to say there was no fear, but we did our best to focus on things, uh, on building hope. And because of it, we had, less fear than most people probably would going through that type of situation. So at the time of this, the second diagnosis, you're already in chiropractic school. So you're obviously more of an alternative thinker when it comes to health and wellness. Did that come from your mom's initial cancer diagnosis when you were a kid? Well, it did, you know, because I saw the conventional medical system. That was my entire experience growing up. You know, having family members that practice medicine, seeing my mom go through the medical system, seeing my mom after my mom had cancer, and got treated with chemotherapy. Her, she went to see her doctor and she came home and she said, hey, I've got new, good news. The doctor just told me I am cancer free and healthy. And we were all so excited. We we're like, hey, praise God. We're so excited you're healed. But for the next 10 years after my mom went through those treatments, she got put on antidepressant medications, thyroid medications, had digestive issues, was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. My mom had to take naps. every. My mom worked as a full-time school teacher. She taught special ed. Um, uh, and, um, she was so tired all the time that she was just exhausted all the time. So, so seeing your mom growing up and she's always sick and because you would think, okay, you're given a medication to get better, right? When you're a little kid, you think, oh, they're going to give my mom medicine. She's going to get better. 
Yet she actually kept getting what from the outside, you, you would think this person is very sick and very ill um, to where my mom was actually like a swim instructor, a teacher. She was like a fitness, like person really into fitness, like really young, fit and healthy at 40. And then all of a sudden over the next 10 years, she looked very unhealthy, was tired. So, and that led me to say, there's got to be a better way. So I started learning about, I got turned on to nutrition from somebody and it just made sense to me. And I saw their life and I saw, wow, because it was a couple, this actually woman was my sister's basketball coach. And this other guy was a football coach. And I started going out and working out with them. They started teaching me about nutrition and I started learning all about this stuff. And then my dad was water skiing with a guy who uh, did uh, nutrition chiropractic and kine- he specifically did kinesiology. And I went into his practice and he was, you know, prescribing, you know, all of these nutrition supplements. He was doing muscle testing. Like he was working on all these patients. And I saw these patients coming in because I went and shadowed him and I saw patients coming in and, and his name was Bob, Dr. Bob in Columbus, Ohio. And, um, and, and he went in and he, and he would have patients coming up to him saying, Hey, Dr. Bob, Hey, the pain I had is completely gone after a few visits. Hey, Dr. Bob, that digestive issue I had, it's completely healed. So my pain's gone. My digestion's better. Hey, my hormones. And I was blown away after shadowing this person a few times that like, Hey, all these people are coming to see this doctor who's practicing functional medicine and chiropractic and they're all healing. And my mom has been going to been to 20 different doctors and she's been sick. Her, so I was able to recognize, okay, this model is not working. This other model works. And so I went and found, Hey, how do I learn this model? And it was through chiropractic and nutrition training. And so I went and got my chiropractic degree. I got my doctor in natural medicine certification, my nutrition certification. I studied some nutrition in college. So I went and learned all of those things because I just saw that they worked. So when you're going to chiropractic school, do you know when you come out, you're going to be looking at a different type of model? Because obviously you're somebody that, you know, heavily works in the online world and you ended up having a functional medicine practice and you're doing things differently. So at what point along your journey did you realize, you know, I'm not going to be practicing like, you know, a traditional chiropractor? Well, I knew pretty early on, actually, because the chiropractor I went and shadowed was did a lot of nutrition, you know, and functional medicine. So that actually was my first exposure. I, I didn't know what a chiropractor did. I just knew that this doctor I saw was helping heal all these people. And he would do adjustments, he would do physical therapy, but he did nutrition, he did all those things. And so when I went to school, my whole thought was, well, I'm just going to do whatever I can to see people heal. And I knew I wanted to help people treat the root cause and not cover up symptoms. And so I knew from the very start, but I think also when my mom seeing her heal and knowing, I learned a lot when my mom healed from cancer. Here's what I learned. I learned when somebody gets a serious diagnosis, whether it be autoimmune disease, hypothyroidism, PCOS, infertility, low testosterone, whatever it is, that they want somebody to lay out an exact plan for them. They don't want a generalization of, Hey, you have, you know, you have PCOS or, or you have infertility. Hey, you need to eat healthier and you need to reduce stress. That's what doctors tell their patients today. It's that general. I found with my mom, she was struck with such fear and there was so much conflicting information that I needed to tell her exactly what to do for breakfast and give her about seven different options do the same thing for lunch, same thing for dinner, tell her what she can do for dessert, write down the exact supplement she should take and what dosage and what amount. So I found that my mom healed best when I gave her a super detailed plan of every last thing she should do to heal. So that that was my only experience. So when I started working with patients, I did the exact same thing for every patient. In fact, I used to tell my patients when they came in, um, I would tell them, I said, I'm gonna take care of you like I would my own mom or my and, and my own family members. And I did that. I just, I I laid out. And then if I couldn't have all the time to treat all the patients, I had a nutritionist come in and I trained her to do exactly what I did. And I would still step in, be part of the consultation, but she did the same thing, very detailed plan going through with them, how to heal. And also, Hey, if something didn't work, Hey, let's figure it out together. Hey, let me ask you some questions to figure out how to help you heal. So I think that's how all doctors should practice. Unfortunately, most don't. But um, my, my, my whole thing wasn't, hey, am I a nutritionist? Am I a chiropractor? Am I a doctor in natural medicine? Am I a conventional? Me-? No, my whole thing was, I want to do whatever it takes to help somebody heal. Josh, do you have outlined anywhere, like in a blog post or a video, 
the actual protocol you took your mom through to help her heal from cancer? Because I think a lot of people listening now, you know, there's going to be people that have family members, friends, or maybe even themselves that are going through a similar thing. This is breast cancer, but maybe that information even is applicable for other cancers. So is there somewhere I can link, link up that information? Yeah, actually, for the first time, I actually I, I put it in a I actually just put it in a recent book, and I'd never put this out there before. But it's in a book I just wrote. It's called Ancient Remedies, um, and so the book Ancient Remedies, I go through the cancer protocol, I go through the exact food supplements, diet, the whole thing. Um, but yeah, people can find that on like Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com or your local bookstore. Just search Doctor Axe Ancient Remedies. So Ancient Remedies is the book. But um, yeah, I. So actually, I'll just kind of share if anybody's watching on video here. So this is it. Um, you can find it on Amazon. And um, I go through all the recipes in here, too. This has other protocols, by the way, too. I go over 70 different protocols for healing inflammatory bowel disease, inflammation, uh, PCOS, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And I'll just give you an example here. Um, so here's one for fibromyalgia. And so the fibromyalgia, I also go through the root cause. So the root cause in Chinese medicine, listen to this, is a upper digestive issue. So it's related to the pancreas. Um, also, fibromyalgia, according to ancient medicine, has a big emotional root. Fibromyalgia is caused by past trauma and lack of sympathy. So if somebody has a trauma like a car accident or physical abuse or emotional abuse, and no one ever gave them sympathy or had empathy for them. They never received that sort of healing response from another person. That's one of the greatest causes of fibromyalgia. And most people with fibromyalgia don't know that they were hurt emotionally or physically. And because they've never had empathy um, for themselves, and oftentimes, sometimes you have to give yourself empathy and others have to do it too, that will keep them from healing. And so I go through how to heal that emotion and then I go through the exact foods to eat. So I go through the exact foods. I go through the top five supplements, which are magnesium, astragalus, ashwagandha, turmeric, and CBD oil. I go through all the natural treatment protocols. So anyways, this book, Ancient Remedies, goes through almost every condition that somebody could suffer with, goes through the exact protocol. So this is a book slash reference manual for natural cures. But anyways, if somebody wants to find the exact protocol, that's where, that's where they'd find it. It's a great read. I read it in prep for our interview. But I guess what I'm getting at, Josh, is even to break it down even further, I know you go into your mom's story quite a bit in the book, but like she had a green tea to start the day and then had like, you know, use this essential oil uh, in a diffuser or took this one orally. Like, I think it'd be really interesting. I don't I don't think the book goes that deep. Well, well but what it, if it you, actually, what if you so, have, so we have a seven day eating plan in there. So if you combine that with the supplement plan, it's pretty it's pretty much it. So if somebody does the supplement plan for, it depends on the type of cancer, but mostly for, for immunity and detoxification. If somebody follows those, because we have those plans in the book, um, if somebody follows that with the supplements we have there for cancer, it's going to be pretty, it, it's pretty much it. Because um, I, I took her exact plan and put it in the book. That's, that's what we put in there. So it's going to be pretty darn close. Got it. Awesome. So I want to come back to your story. We talked about that period of time when you started your practice and you were, you mentioned you were single at the time. You're just grinding, pushing. Where does Chelsea come to the picture? When do you guys meet? Yeah. So actually Chelsea, I met her. She was, you know, training to become a doctor. She was in chiropractic school and she came up to, um, uh, shadow my office when I was in practice. She was about six years younger than me. And I knew her cousin, her cousin, just a great, uh, great doctor in Knoxville and, um, and so she came up to shadow me. This is about nine years ago or so. And, um, so anyways, yeah, she came to shadow the office and I thought, who is this beautiful babe, you know, coming into my, my clinic right now. And, uh, so that's, that's how I, uh, I met Chelsea. So you mentioned before you're originally from Ohio, you go to school for chiropractic in Florida. How do you end up in Nashville? Yeah. So I ended up in Nashville through, uh, I had a friend who moved here. He was actually a, a, a musician and uh, I came to visit him. And, um, and at, at the time, and by the way, I, my dad, I mentioned before, we were big water skiers growing up. Any va every vacation I went on as a kid, 
it revolved being on water. Okay. So my dad could water. my dad loved water skiing. So we almost always went to two places. We went to Orlando because my mom wanted to go, we'd go to Disney and then we'd water ski or we would go to Tennessee where we would um, camp or rent a cabin and then we would get a houseboat and we would just water ski all day. So I'd been to Knoxville, Tennessee a lot. So I was thinking about North Carolina or Knoxville, some of those areas, but then I came to visit Nashville and I just thought, wow, what a great city. The thing that I noticed is I did an internship in Chicago and I swear to you, every business I tried to get in or every relationship I tried to build, somebody just shut the door in my face. Now, listen, if you're from Chicago, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be mean to people from Chicago or the Northeast, but it just wasn't welcoming. And so I came to Nashville and everybody was like, hey, it's great to meet you. Hey, how can I help you? How can I serve? And it was like, wow, like this is awesome. So for me, the warm welcome that I got in Nashville and the relationships that I immediately built that, you know, just for me, relationships are important. I think about this, you know, when I think about my best experiences in life, none of them are by myself. Like I think about the time Chelsea and I were in uh, with a, two of our best friends in Italy driving around like in this scary moment going down to this area called Cinque Terre on the coast of Italy. And then, you know, the food we ate there together, the great conversations we had, the laughing. We, my, my friend Pete um, looks Italian. He had this long flowing hair, looks Italian. And he is, he's from, his family's all from Sicily. But uh, his, the guy said, oh, well, you're Italian. You can just have this boat. First, we weren't supposed to take this boat out by ourselves, but the guy thought he was from, uh, from Cinque Terre. So we, we rented this boat and drove all around the Mediterranean Sea on our own. I'm glad we did not get lost. But we did that. So anyways, all that being said, my best experiences that I've ever had are with people. And I know how important relationships are. And so for me, a big thing that drew me to Nashville is I could tell already, like, man, I was going to build deep, intimate relationships here with people. And I still have, so, I mean, I have so many close friends here in Nashville that I love, love spending time with people that are positive, people that are committed to serving and lo loving either other people, making the earth, the world a better place, people that are actual real friends. It, it, I want to mention something. And by the way, I hope nobody takes offense to this. I'm just, but I was out in California and I had this guy say this to me and he said, Hey, where are you from? I said, Hey, I'm from Nashville. And I said, Hey, how do you like living out here in California? He said, well, he said, I haven't liked it very much so far. He had just moved there from the Midwest. And he said, I feel like everybody's trying to use me to get ahead. And he said, I haven't been able to build any real relationships. Listen, that's not saying anything about California. There are people like that all over the world in Nashville, all over the place. But, but I just, when I got to Nashville, I felt like, okay, the people here, um, man, they, they, you know, they're, they're, it's not all about them and how they can get ahead in life. And where's Chelsea initially from? Uh, she's from Minnesota. So we're both from Big Ten country. We're both from the North, uh, from the Midwest. And um, yeah, so she's from Minnesota. So I spent a lot of holidays, a lot of Christmases. She lives about two hours west of, uh, of Minneapolis, the middle of absolutely nowhere. And uh, so anyways, I've enjoyed some, some great holidays in the uh, great state of Minnesota as well. And now I know how important it is to have support, especially with a young child at home. Do you guys have family that's, that's moved close by or how does that work? So her, her parents are still in Minnesota. Mine moved from Ohio down to Florida. My brother actually practices, is it, my brother actually runs a functional medicine clinic in Tampa, Florida. It's called a uh, acts holistic medicine. And so my parents live real close to him there, but my parents come up about, I mean, because my sister also has grandkids now, like my mom flies up every six weeks for about a week or two. Uh, so we see my mom, you know, every six weeks, Chelsea's mom comes up frequently as well. And so, but her parents are working on moving here. I think in the next two, three years, they'll live here full time. Uh, so we've had a lot of help from her mom, from my mom, um, and, and that's why, I mean, what a blessing to have family, you know, when you're, when you're raising a, a little one. It's so important. Yeah. So an area of your story that I'm really curious about is the online part of your business, which is again, a big part of what you do. And now you're not even doing the functional medicine. You don't have a practice anymore, but when did that start? So you're talking about working those 60 hour work weeks back in the clinic. Were you were you starting to like write blog posts back then or what did the early days look like? And when did, when did you start that? Yeah. So I opened my practice in 2008 
And, um, and I, and at the time I actually, I like writing, I like creating content. I love speaking and just, I love just teaching people. And so I, I started writing a newsletter that I would type out. It'd be a one pager and it would be something like five steps to lower your blood pressure or, you know, um, the seven top nutrients for healing leaky gut syndrome, whatever it is, you know, I would, I would write a newsletter, I would hand it to a patient and all my patients got a news, a new newsletter every week. Well, my, uh, I had a patient come up to me and she said, Hey, this is awesome, but I'd love to send this to my aunt in North Carolina. Who's got high blood pressure. She said, but, um, is this posted anywhere online? And I'm like, no, I just put it on my computer. And I just, she's like, is there a way you could post this online? And so I asked my assistant at the time, her name was Lori. I said, Lori, is there, how do I get this thing up online? She said, well, my husband's actually a graphic designer. And do you want him to build you a website? I'm like, Hey, that'd be great. So he built, built the website. I think it was done by probably 2009, you know, early on. And, um, and so anyways, I started posting these articles online and all of a sudden, a lot of people were reading them, you know? So that's kind of how it happened. Talk about the growth though. I'm really curious to get into the details. How long did it take before you noticed, like, were you looking at traffic and noticing it was picking up steam or were you kind of well, just- not originally. I mean, you know, I didn't know how to use all the analytics, but I think about a year or two, about a year in, a year and a half in, I said, hey, how many visits are we getting a month? And I think it was like a hundred thousand. I was like, what? hundred thousand people are reading this a month? you know, I was kind of blown away and then it grew a little more and a little more and a little more. Eventually we had a snowball effect. And I want to say in 2018, so about nine years later, we were the number one natural health website in the world at dracks.com at nearly 20 million monthly visitors. And, um, and so the, the website just exploded. I mean, you know, just the number of people viewing it and just the reviews of people saying, you know, I just, I, I saw a lot of these messages saying people, people saying, thanks for such a great resource because you're speaking truth about this stuff. You're giving the details, you're quoting all the medical research, you're posting recipes, you know, if, if you're talking about something. And so, um, but here's, what's crazy, Jesse, my website today, dracks.com now gets closer to 4 million views. So the, the visits have gone down by 85 to 90%. And here's why Google actually now is more of a pharmaceutical company. So Google started a farm to a, a pharmaceutical company themselves. They bought two pharmaceutical companies and then they own a major stake in Glasco Smith and Klein, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. So we want to understand Google's two things. Google is a tech company and a pharmaceutical company. So they came out with a Google algorithm a few years ago, a form of censorship that said, okay, we want medical sites that are running medical ads to get all the website traffic. And so they literally took all the websites. So I'm talking about my website, drax.com, mercola.com, all the natural health websites that talked about the benefits of using natural supplements and foods and things. They actually punished them. And our website traffic went from 20 million down to 4 million and less in the course of a two months. And they, all the visits went to WebMD and Mayo Clinic. And so like where we were writing, I was, I was quoting, like I wrote an article on turmeric on that because there were studies showing that turmeric was more beneficial than 20 different medications in treating heart disease and, and all these, and inflammation, all these different diseases. Well, now if you go to WebMD, if you search turmeric and WebMD pulls up, it says, does turmeric actually work? And so they're questioning it. And then they have ads on the site that instead have a medication uh, for the same condition that turmeric would treat. So you see more about a medication. So people don't realize how deep this is, but I'll just say, and I know that th this episode's not about this. So I know people may not want to hear about this or not, but the truth is the censorship now of Google and Facebook and Twitter and these social media companies is out of control. It's like, what are you trying to hide? They're trying to hide the truth because of money. It costs a lot more, um, to, to farm and source turmeric than it does to create a synthetic tablet, which costs less than a penny. And yet they'll sell it for all this money to make money off of people that are ill. So anyways, all that being said, I know you didn't ask me about that necessarily, but I just want people to know the truth of, so of, of what these big companies are doing. So just to let you know, if you're ser ser searching in the future, switch to a search engine like DuckDuckGo. 
So duck, duck, go, or another one and, and search turmeric and you'll see, you know, a lot of good resources pull up that are speaking the truth, not someone that's trying to brainwash you into thinking that a medication will heal. So again, I just, um, just important for people to know. No, this is, this is really important. I'm fascinated by it. I'm glad we're going, we're going deep on it. So what Josh, have you done to combat that? You said within two months, it dropped down you know, to under 4 million or 4 million. What do you do in the position you're at? This is your business. How do you, how do you make sure you're still relevant and and getting found? Yeah. So for us, you know, and here's the other thing I believe, you know, when that happened, you know what my response was, God, this is your business. You've got the whole world in your hands and I'm, I'm not called to, you know, like I'm not called to change what the tech company is specifically doing themselves. Like I'm called to love people. I'm called to teach people these principles and nutrition, the same things that healed my mom. I'm going to teach that to people. So I'll use a different fat platform. I'll speak to people in person. I'll start a podcast like I did, you know, around that time. And so I'll find other ways to get the truth out there. Uh, so that's, so that's for me. I never focus on, you know, I never meditate and think about, oh, how bad things are. Cause let me say this. I had a lot of practitioners call me and they said, uh, one of them called me in tears and he said, Josh, my business is it, it, my business that I run. He, he ran a, a uh, online functional medicine clinic, like a virtual clinic. And he said, my visits went declined by 90%. He said, and now I don't, I, I don't, I lost my source of marketing. And he said, what do I do? And I said to this doctor, I said, I said, um, I said, Bill, I said, you know what? Um, God will provide, let me pray for you. And let me know what I can do to support you. Here's some ideas, but I said, you're going to be okay. And you know what? He was okay. And so for me, it's not, I'm not going to live in fear. I'm just going to, you know, just going to do my best. I told, uh, I told a friend this the other day who was flipping out about something that happened on Facebook where they got banned. And I said, Hey, what's the worst that can happen? You know, I know we've got some land over here. What's the worst that we can happen? We, you know, we, we build a cabin and we grow our own vegetables and we, you know, we, we uh, get rid of the carrot. You know, we just, we raise our families here on this little bit of land we own, whatever else. So I said, that's the worst, you know, that's not so bad. I've had similar conversations. That's so funny. So do you think we're getting better or worse? Do you think this is now like, you know, hit its climax where censorship of, of natural health and wellness, you know, do you think this is going to continue to get worse or are we going to raise awareness by people like you speaking out and, and head back in, in a better direction? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that depends on how we respond. It really does. You know, I think, and it depends, uh, fortunately, a lot on politics, who you vote for. I mean, there is one side of a party that once censorship and once things ban and once more power, and there's one side of the political spectrum that says we need more freedom to be able to voice our opinion and, and we need more freedom. And so for me, I'm all for more freedom. And so I think it depends on how you vote and how you act. And so for me, I'm speaking out about this, letting people know, like I am on this podcast, I'm sharing the truth of what's out there. I'm looking for alternatives to, um, other social media platforms and getting on, I'll be getting on other platforms here in the near future and, and taking action in that way. So anyways, it's, um, I, uh, again, I, I believe that we need to stand up and we need to, um, let people know the truth. And, um, and I think we're probably going to need to find some different platforms in the future where censorship is not so, uh, so prevalent because it, it, it's one thing to censor, uh, something that is damaging to an individual, but the truth is what, what they are covering up and what they are censoring should not be censored. Almost none of it should be censored. Josh, I know I only have you for a couple more minutes, but I want to come back to the book, Ancient Remedies, and let's end on giving people some practical information. Let's talk about what a few different ancient remedies are that people might not have heard of and Let's let's what gives people the most bang for their buck? Yeah, so I would say this. And by the way, I've written a lot of books, everything from eat dirt to keto diet, collagen diet, essential oils, ancient mess. I've written written quite a few books. And this is by far the best book I've ever written. It is the most detailed. I've had people go through, including other doctors. We have an endorsement on it. For, Dr. Oz endorsed the book. He hardly ever writes endorsements. So Dr. Uh, Oz wrote an endorsement for the book. 
Dr. David Perlmutter, Sean Johnson, East, the Olympic athlete. Like we had all of these people coming out saying that after they read the book, they're like, this is, this is amazing uh, because it's a book. And it also is a reference guide in the back to where if you have any condition, it goes through the exact prescriptions to help heal that condition. So again, we've gotten rave reviews on that. Just a few things. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot a, share a few of the herbs. It's a good combination of herbs you've heard of like turmeric and ginger and how to use those, but other things you may not have heard of. So I, I talk about a Astragalus. Astragalus is one of the top three herbs prescribed in all of Chinese medicine. It's the number one herb for healing leaky gut syndrome. It is one of the most powerful herbs for digestive health, for long-term immune system, for fighting uh, different types of, uh, you know, foreign invaders in our system. Um, so again, it, it's, it's a, one of the most popular herbs, top three in all of ancient medicine, yet hardly anyone takes it today. And it's probably the herb that I take the most personally and that I prescribe the most. So I go through astragalus, how to use it for another big thing it's great for is hypothyroidism. Now the number one is ashwagandha for hypothyroid, but the number two herb for hypothyroidism is astragalus. And so it's a really powerful herb that strengthens your adrenals, your immune system, uh, as well as your, um, your digestive system, all three of those systems that help strengthen. So that's one. There's another herb called faux tea. This was the number one anti-aging herb used in Chinese medicine. It's also known as he shu wu. But this herb was known, actually originally it was discovered by a physician who started taking it and he noticed his gray hair started turning back black. It actually started going back in color. And so it's still used today to reverse aging. It actually nourishes something called Jing in the body, which essentially for men would be sperm, but it helps strengthen your DNA. So it strengthens your body at a cellular level. So it's sort of like cellular anti-aging is what this incredible herb does. Another herb is Shisandra. Shisandra is an adaptogenic berry. Um, it's one, it's the only food on the planet that has all five flavors. And it was used in formulas to help um, uh, create synergy between your organ systems. But this is really powerful for anti-aging. It's great for your immune health. So if somebody comes down with something like mono or a severe immune issue, Shisandra, this berry is so incredible. I talk about another berry compound called Trifala, which is famed in Ayurvedic medicine. So for digestive issues like constipation or any sort of digestive issue, it works incredibly well. Um, and I, I get into certain mushrooms, cordyceps, that type of mushroom was used for boosting a lung health. So if anybody has any type of respiratory or lung issue, cordyceps work. In fact, athletes in Russia, the uh, Russian Olympians in the 1970s took cordyceps combined with Siberian ginseng and uh, to increase their overall athletic performance endurance. Rishi, one of the most powerful mushrooms from anti-aging, turkey tail has antiviral properties and studies are being done on turkey tail for fighting viral infections right now. Uh, and then lion's mane, a total, you know, it actually helps repair nerve damage this incredible uh, compound. Anyways, I could go through like 30 others. I cover all of these in the book. I have a whole section on advanced, like on, on these herb training on what's best for what conditions. Um, it's pretty, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, um, and I, I use this book, like, you know, I'm constantly going, um, going back to it. Uh, Cause again, I, most of the stuff is sort of like in my head and I know, but on occasion too, rather than thinking, I'm like, okay, let, let, me, let me remind myself, like, what's the best thing? Like my, I had a relative who had psoriasis and he said, Hey, what do I do for psoriasis? And I just, I literally took a screenshot of the page and I just, I just, I texted back to him and said, do this. Um, so anyways, yeah. And when it comes to all these herbs, do you have a preferred way that you recommend people take them through tincture, capsule, making teas? just to get people started with, if this is new to them? You know, I think it depends on the herb. I, I, let me say this, throughout history, people did them as teas or decoctions where they just simmer them in water and then strain them and then drink the liquid. Today though, we obviously can do the same method and then pull the water out and put them in powder form, which is something I've done is, is in, in the supplement company I own. And so anyways, I think taking... Uh, my answer is it doesn't matter. I think whether you're taking in capsule form, food form, tea form, powder, I think they're all good. Uh, and, and they all have their benefits. Um, 
as well. I think the bigger thing is, let me give you an example. One of the things I get to in the book is I talk about something called herb combining. So people might've heard of food combining, which were like, you don't want to eat meat with fruit because the enzymes need to be so different in your gastric pH of your digestive system can cause fermentation anyways. So there's food combining principles, but herb combining shows that there are certain herbs that can be taken together that make them more effective. For instance, we know of this one, most people are familiar in order to better absorb turmeric, you should take it with warming spices like black pepper. The ancient formula in turmeric golden tea was turmeric plus a warming spice blend called Trichitu, which was ginger, black pepper, long pepper. What warming spices do is they open up your blood vessels, your capillaries, and they cause greater circulation. So now turmeric is getting throughout your entire body. In fact, listen to this. According to medical research, if you take turmeric with black pepper, the absorption is increased by 154%. It makes that big of a difference. And this was known in ancient medicine. So I go through in the book, like when you're taking certain herbs, you want to take them with other herbs or certain foods to increase the absorption and effectiveness of those herbs and superfoods. I like that. Josh, I know you got to go. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks for coming back on the show. Other than people getting a copy of Ancient Remedies, how can they connect with you? Yeah, you can find me on uh, my website, draxe.com. That's D R A X E.com. And hey, just search my name. If you want to, if you're looking for anything, maybe you're looking for more information on collagen or probiotics or a condition, just search Dr. Axe, you know, probiotics or search Dr. Axe hypothyroidism. And I've written a lot of articles on there. I've posted videos on YouTube. So I just search on search engines on YouTube, or you can follow me on social media, Dr. Josh Axe at Instagram and, and Facebook, those sort of pages. And, um, but that's, uh, that's where people can uh, find me. Jesse, you want to say, Hey, thanks so much for having me on. This has been uh, fun as always. Hopefully we can do it again. Absolutely. And I just want to add to that. I truly find that every time I do a Google search with your name, with with anything, there is an article written on that. You've been doing this, like you said, for a long time. You have a huge library of information out there. And I want to congratulate you on, on your new baby, Arwin, on the new book, and for all the great work you're doing. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, everybody.